welcome back to some more Shadow of the Herb Tree. Today, we're about to pop the trunk on them boys and show off all the weapons I've collected so far in the DLC. I, th I know for a fact I think I'm missing at least one weapon. It might be more, but y'all can let me know if I'm missing some more and I'll go farm them and get them. I'm going to probably farm a little bit after this anyways. I haven't touched the game in, I don't know, um, a couple days. More than a couple days, probably. Probably like over a week. Because we, the last video of us beating Radon aired on the 11th of July. I made that video probably on like the 6th, 7th of July or something like that. So I haven't touched the game since then. Right now it's the 13th of July for me. So, but I was like, you know what? Let's do a... Uh, Let's do a showcase because the next game I want to play is the Wukong game. I might play something in the middle of that, but I want to play that Wukong game. That doesn't come out till like August 12th or 18th or something like that. So we might do a new game plus in preparation for that and do a different build. I've been doing a Dex Int build the entire time. And maybe I might do a Faith build because I don't really mess with incantations. But I feel like I probably would have had an even a much easier time doing this DLC if I had used incantations. But for now, we're going to do a weapon showcase. Um, I don't know if I really want to see the weapons taking out enemies, but we'll we'll just take out some enemies too. There should be some enemies like right over here. They probably walked away because I've I've been sitting there for too long. But what is food at? This first weapon we have is the Horn Knight Greatsword, and I'm gonna, I'll, I'll show off the description and stuff too. We'll take care of these guys. So the first we have is the Horned Warrior Greatsword. And you get this a little later in the game from the big Horned Warriors that are almost like the Crucible Knights of the DLC. And you see the regular moveset is just the R1s is just regular slashing. Re regular slashing is the R1s. And what is this? Is this a, it's a curved greatsword. The R2s is a little hold, right? We'll, we'll do a side. So that's the R2s. And then the L2 skill. Let's, let's pop over here so we can knock these dudes out right quick. The L2 skill is, a, is one of the skills they use. I, I would have preferred to have been their, their other OP skill, but it's this skill instead. So it makes this big thing and it makes a little tornado thing. You can do it once, twice, three times. And the third time is the end of it. One, two, and then that's the end of it. They have a different skill that you'll see them use if you summon the horn knight. You see them, and they do this skill when they make their sword almost looks like the ohm. Uh, if you remember the, the ohm crusher, how his blade looks all spiky and and like a, a great blood loss. They have a skill that does that, and that skill, and they smash down once, smash down again, smash down a third time, and the fourth time they double hand it, and when they smash down, they make uh, thorns come out the ground. I think that would have been the better skill for them to showcase than this one, but this is what they went with. All right, and that's the Horned Warrior Greatsword. So next, we're gonna go with it. Somebody smacked me in my back. We'll go to the top. We'll go with this. We'll go with the Fire Knight Short Sword, which honestly, when I got it, I thought it, for some reason, even though I read Short Sword, I thought, I thought it was a Long Sword. So I'm missing the Fire Knight Greatsword, for sure. And I think it's a Colossus weapon, but you got this Short Sword, which is a dagger. And that's a tap on it. It already has fire on it. That was the R1s. Here's the R2. It's a double double slash right at the beginning. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. So five. And then uh, the L2 is just a quick like uh, sh sh uh, sh uh, like shift around type attack. The quick step, basically. Um. Then we picked up this. I don't The Mongoch? Grotch? This is basically supposed to be a, an offhand weapon. This is not supposed to be like a... Yeah, it's a, it's a little rapier. It's a dagger. Almost, and almost like a, rap, a rapier. But if you look at the description of it, see how it, it parries? The description of it says... So let's wait. Let's go to inventory. Inventory. I hate that you have to go that way in order to see the actual description and stuff. But the inventory is intended to be used in your left hand, thereby complementing a piercing sword or identical blade held in the right to enable a distinctive style of fighting. So, do I have any rapiers with me right now? Actually, I think I do. Let's let's 
put this in the offhand. And we got a new rapier in the DLC. This one right here. Let's see what this looks like. See? It pairs with any any other rapier. And so, since we already have this sword in our hand, we'll go on with this next DLC sword. This sword, which is the Carrion Sorcery Sword, is exactly as it sounds. It is a sorcery sword. Let's go to the description. It's one of the Carrion uh, Royal Family's Glintstone Swords, a smaller piercing sword with a slender blade formerly used by the Carrion Knights of old before the full refinement of their sorcery combat techniques. This armament functions as a catalyst for Glintstone sorcery when it's executing strong attacks. So at first, when I first got it, I was like, I was like, man, what the hell does this sword do? Let me take this off. I was like, what the hell does this sword do? Because it, that's all it did right there was that. And I was like, what the hell does this sword do? But as you can see, it's, it's supposed it's supposed to, boom, functions at functions as a catalyst. So I don't need a uh, which call it. I don't need a staff. But it is pr a pretty weak scaling with sorcery. Let me see. It doesn't even state it up there because usually a a staff will have a sorcery uh, stat down there somewhere. So you can see how much it boosts your sorcery up. But this, this one, this one scales pretty, pretty poorly with stats. Like even the weakest staff would still be stronger than this one. Let me go to a staff. What am I doing? My, my brain, I had a brain fart for a second. All right. See, like, see, see how down at the bottom it says uh, sorcery scaling and whatnot. Yeah. They say even, even the weakest staff will still have a stronger uh, sorcery scaling than that staff, than that sword leveled up. But you still have the, just like a piercing, like any other R1, the R2s is automatically a spell, and the L2 is this lunging attack. That's the uh, Korean sorcery sword. All right, let's go back up. Um, all right, now we'll go to short swords, right? We have the Velvet Sword of Saint Trina. What? All right, the Velvet Sword of Saint Trina. It is a silver sword of Saint Trina, now sustained the color of velvet, inflicting eternal sleep. So not just regular sleep, eternal sleep. And uh, when Saint Trina was abandoned, the faint light purple mist coincided into the intoxicating deep purple cloud. Mist of eternal sleep is what it is. So you got your R1, your R2, which is a stab or a backslash, an upwards backslash actually. And then your L2. And it just pops out purple smoke. Which puts people to sleep. I wonder if I can put sheep to sleep. No, no, no. Come here. Okay, probably not. Let's let's go to some enemies. There should be some enemies like legit right over here. So we'll walk, we'll walk over here so we can put them to sleep right quick. So I can see that. I could just reset every time. Oh, these dogs about to be annoying. But it hits them. I don't know if these. I don't know if these dudes can go to sleep. Can they spirits? Up, oh, dogs asleep. Stop that. Oh, and it puts sleep. Oh, I thought he was dead. It puts sleep on the sword too. So now the sword, when you hit, is gonna do more sleep damage. You can see it glowing. And dogs asleep. Can I stab him? I see he's in eternal sleep. He's sleep sleep. I just beat him. I just hit him a couple times, and he did not wake up. He is in. A, he's in. A, he's in eternal sleep. Unlike regular sleep, they can sustain some damage. Like they are, they are sleeping. They are not waking up. They are asleep. All right. Next, we'll go to the the, the Michaelian, uh Knight Sword. It's a sword forged by the servant of Mikula of the Hel uh, Hel Hegel Tree, with a designed model after those carried by the Carrion Knights. Instead of glintstone, however, amber from the Hel Tree is embedded in the blade. A uh, assumptuous piece, yet it has never been offered to any knight. An ill starred sword with no master. Sacred blade is what it is. Grants armor and a boost of holy essence. So, again, the basic uh, style, I mean, basic R1s. R2 is a charge R2. And then the L2, boom. Let's do it, let's do it this way so you can see. Pops out. We'll we'll 
lock on an enemy so you can see the blade, the uh, sacred blade shooting out as well. So hit some up, and I'm 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 actually trying to hold it to to make repetitive attacks, but it can't. It's just it's just one. There is no repetitive attacks. Okay, dog. And now my sword also has holy damage. I ain't gonna lie, I don't know where I got this sword from. I didn't even remember it until I was going through and I seen it. But these swords, the Sword of Light and the Sword of Dark. Uh, the Sword of Light, you get this sword, it's basically like a uh, sarcophagi sword at first, and then you can change it to a light or a dark sword, depending on which one of the altars you go to. One of the altars, the, the dark altar is over here. So inside these ruins right here is the dark altar to change it to the dark sword. The light altar is over here. I'm trying to think because it's, it's, it's on a floating part that you can't get to. It might be this one or it might be this, one of these ones over here. But it's, it's on a floating part that you have to like walk across an invisible uh, ladder to get to. Not even ladder, uh, the invisible bridge to get to. But it's sort of light. Again, the basic freaking R1s, the thrusting R2 with a backslash, up with a backslash, the L2 is the thing that gets people. So you can long hold it, and it shoots out this light. And see how far that went. If I, if I short press it, it still does it. So it doesn't matter if you long press it or, or short press it. Now, the Sword of Dark, the only, you can only get one of these. I got two because I dropped one for my friend and changed it over and then went back to it. The Sword of Dark does pretty much the same thing but with darkness so it just looks super dope with some darkness on it all right let me just, let me sit right quick get my my fp back and then we'll do the next weapon next weapon is gonna be one of the new models to the game which is excuse me excuse me the light great sword. So we got the Milady. Is this is the, like the first one you probably gonna pick up? Is the Milady. And the move set is as such. Mm, mm, this is the R ones. It's basically like a, a a nice dance, and that was all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, six hits. The R two. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the L two one just one straight stab now if I dual hand this one two three four five six same thing one two three four and that's just, it's only four and it's still it's still a thrust that's the milady now you can hit Outside the melee, I, I feel like the melee does something else. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Something, something's not right. Because I felt like I seen somebody do something crazy with this melee. They did some type of stance that made it, uh. Oops, I didn't mean to take it off. Nick, they have to laser the noble. Will this sword as swiftly as one might will? Yeah, I feel like I, I seen somebody do something crazy with it, but. We'll go to Lydia's sword. Lydia's sword's next. Stay back. So yeah, yeah. Let us sword. One, two, three, four, five. It's the, it's the same move set, really. It's the R two. I mean, the L two. That's different. So her L two does this thing that that spikes on people. Let's get to us him. So all of these holy, and they they get on top of him. Slice them up. All right. Next, we have the Rolanas Twin Blades. Now, obviously, you see the other blades on my back. You see the same style, same same hitting. Now, the L2, with one sword, she automatically pulls out both. And I can hit R1, and I'll throw this out. Now, still holding this, hit R2. And the flames come out. 
Now you know if you fought her, you seen all that. So it's either R1 or the R2. The R1 brings your magic sword, it's your right hand sword. Two, three, four, five. And the R2 flames out your flame sword, your, your left hand sword. And you can still, that was me continuing right after that. Now if you dual hand this, now you have both swords out. Because they're twin blades. And those are the only tree uh, light great swords in the game. I felt like they definitely should have, on a lot of these weapons, they implemented a lot of new weapon stuff, but they didn't implement a lot of the new weapon types. Speaking of, I skipped over one. Let's go back to the only throwing blade in the entire game, which is crazy. You implemented a new class, but only put one weapon in it. Give me a second, y'all. All right, this is the only throwing dagger, in, well, throwing weapon, throwing dagger in the game. So R1 just makes it throw automatically. You see it, you see this, there's another one on my hip because you can dual wield this and we'll get to that. I don't know, there's some, there should be some more enemies over here. Whole, whole butt, buttload of them. Can't hit them from that far, that's too far. But right here, we should be able to hit them. Oh, no, nope, still too far. Oh, wow, still too far? That's, that's a pretty close for a weapon. That's all the R1s, and here's the R2. R2 is just a heavier throw. The L2, you throw a bit of wind on it so you can pierce through them. And then if I dual hand it, now I can just keep tossing them. So you, every, every toss is, a, is two. So one R1 press is two. Let's go and see if the L2 changes with that, like that too. Now the L2 is still just one. And that's the only throwing dagger in the entire game, throwing blade in the entire game, which makes no sense because it's a whole new class, but it's only one of them. Next, we'll go to the uh, Great Sword. So the Great Sword of Damnation is the Great Sword added to it. This is the weapon from um, Midra. Midra gives you this weapon. So this weapon, I don't know if I can use it on, a, I don't know if it pops out on the enemy, if it only pops out on players. This one might be kind of difficult to showcase because it might be one of those, uh, it only, the, the full effect of it only happens to players. And I remember because I told, I, I told my buddy that when and somebody invaded us via PVP, or invaded him, I don't know why, but he, he, he just kept getting invaded while I was trying to help him with stuff. You just seen that was the R1. I had to take that because that got a lot of spirits on it. I mean, a lot of uh, runes. So that was the R1. This is the R2. Straight thrust. Now the L2 is this. Jump up, stab. See that killed him automatically. I don't think it does it. But we'll do we'll do a dual handed. And then pop the ground. So what's a, if, if it's a person, what happens is you stab the person. You stab them and inside of them, and then you push it again, and it pops out of them like that. I forgot to read the uh, I forgot to read the uh, description on a couple of these last weapons. I'm gonna go back and read descriptions right quick. I'm gonna go to the, the graced right quick and then I'm gonna read the descriptions on those weapons that we just re went right past. Okay. We'll read the description on this one first. Didn't mean to remove it, but well. Alright. <clears throat> Whatever. All right, the strip Smith, I mean the uh, Smith strips daggers. It reduces mass, enhance, reduce mass, and enhances the efforts of the smithing arts, allowing this weapon to function as a throwing dagger for all attacks. Once thrown, the dagger instantly reappears in the wielder's hand. That's how you get it back. Now, the sword of light, obviously the sword of light pulled from his stone scabbard at the atlas from the quick. Uh, oh yeah, what from the quick of the root unswerving rays of light inserts and reflects to give off a silver blade form from the quick of the roots wandering coils of darkness 
coincide and release in the edits and vortice given from the dark blade. Now, Lady's sword, is Lady's great sword, it threw polish to as a though polished to a mirror sheen. This blade still reeks with the stench of crusted blood that lingers from the curl of her knightly comrades. And then two swords as a single armament. When two handed, when two handed, when two handing a straight sword engraved with gold flame will be carried in your left hand here and here alone were moon and fire ever together. All right. And it mirrors the barbs that pierce the victim from within when greatly around the blade. As it says, you leap up in and you screw a foe overhead. If successful, the weapon's barbs unfold to eradicate from within. What? Execrate from within. Else, additionally inputs release barbs in the area. There is something of the golden order in the sight of those fixed upon the crews. All right, and then we got the uh, moon thorough knight sword. The moon thorough was a twin moon knight uh, chamberlain. She was w also a friend to the trolls who served the royal family and proudly wielded their weapons as they fought arm in arm with their gargantuan comrades. So we'll put this on. This is this should be a colossal uh, great sword. Yep, it's a colossal sword. So. We'll go ahead and two-hand it. So that's the R1. Here's the R2. And here's the L2. Bing. So I do the, the, the big ones. Hiya. Bing. All right. Next, we'll do the ancient meteorite or great sword. This. Fashioned from an ex execrated shard of an arrowhead that was once part of the the old guy's arsenal, a capable piercing weapon that excels at thrusting arts. So you got the R1. Do hand this. R1. R2. The default R2. And the L2. One. And then boom, thrust up in them. Yeah, that's a two input attack. So the one is that one, and then two, and you ex you uh, uh, pop out with that lightning and stuff. Then we have Radon's uh, great sword of Radon. One of them is Lord, the other one is Light. We'll do Lord first. Again, I had to uh, give my friends these weapons because he has Radon has three. Remember three things you get from his remembrance. So. Oops. Uh, oh. So it is still a dual headed weapon, no matter what. I did not know that, to tell you the truth. I did not know. And that's the L2. I, I, I should have swing both. R1. R2. Yeah, but this is the. As you've seen. That's actually a, a whole lot of attacks. Two, three, four, five, six. Six attacks. Six attacks. And now here's the light. Same attack pattern here with the R1s and R2s. The L2s was different. See? Just rain down on top of them. Let me rest again. So you got Lord and you got Light. And I'm sure a bunch of people remember those moves because they freaking irritate us all. They freaking made us all probably quit. All right, and then we go to, um, we already showcased that carrying sorcery sword. 
We're going to the curved swords, right? I love curved swords, but yeah, you know I mean, it is what it is. We have the Dancer's Blade of Rana. And then it's used by the Dancers of Rana and it strikes the enemies with a dancing assault when executing a strong attack. Now, one of the things too that we've noted, I've noticed about a bunch of these swords is they're all already, already dual-handed swords. Like these, this is two blades. You can see the other blade on, my, on, on me. This is two blades, this is not one. So we do the one-handed first and you can see it almost the dance the it's almost as if it's a rapier or something and if you've seen like fencers how they have one hand that's like almost stuck to the saddle behind their back and they only and they just using that that hand that's how it seems like what's happening here and this is the r2 and this is the l2 both blades automatically come out but they're not being used like they properly should be used so again the dual sworded r1s R2. Let me, let me let me get these big blades out of my out of the way. They're distracting. Okay, dog. Anyways, okay, you're done too. And here's the L2. Just dance. Just dance for me. You actually can just hold it. You just hold it and it sh sh it, they just keep dancing until you got no more freaking uh, no FP left. You ain't got to keep pressing it. You just just hold it. And I'm dancing, to, I'm dancing around like Tinkerbell. Okay. And then we'll go to the Horn Warrior Sword, which is not the Great Sword. It's the Curved Sword. Again, this is a dual one too. You can see. So here's the R1. Here's the R2. Here's the... L1, I mean L2, L1, L, L1, is that's just a punch, which is crazy because that, that's one of the ways too you can know that it's a dual handed sword because it's making me punch, it's making me use my offhand when I should be blocking with it. But here we go. And if you hit L1 now, see now I can block, I'm blocking with one. And then here's, the, here's it with two hands. Next, we go to the curved swords. You got Freya's great sword. And we'll do a hand this. R1s. R2. And then, boom. Is it just a spin and spin? Which is crazy because I didn't see her do this as much. I actually seen her do the Lion's Claw more because she's a, she's one of Radon's uh, folks, and the Lion's Claw is one of their moves. All right, now we go to one another new weapon, which is only three of these new weapons too. The backhand blade. Backhand. Wait a minute, I'm missing a katana. I need to get a katana out of here. I right, am missing a katana. Let's go back to our storage. There we go. All right, you got the backhand blades. Now you got one blade. You got two. That's your R2. And then you got your, your quick backstab. Now it's supposed to be two blades. And they literally just scimitar just backwards. But they're super quick. And if you, if you put bleed on them, they can proc bleed. This doesn't have bleed automatically, but they can proc bleed on them. Now we go to this script smith one. Most of all the script smith weapons you can, you can throw. That's their specialty on them. They're, they're, they're light like that, so you can throw them. See, this one has the, the same thing. Boom, that backstab uh, technique to it. But if you hold the R2, you can sling these weapons. Just toss them around. So R2 is a throw. R1 is is, is here. And then the, R, the L2 is, again, that, that backstab and attack. Now, these are the ones that's different. The Curse Blades uh, Circus. If you remember those dudes that was on like the cover almost not necessarily the cover but it was like one of the poster childs for this game and when you find them they just keep beating the crap out of you and dancing around this is their weapons this is their weapons right here and here's their l2 okay okay brother yeah the l2 is that spinning attack and then the r2 is just a, a lunging attack here all right, next we'll go on to katanas. Okay, this this is a curved sword. The spirit sword we missed here is a curved sword. This one is not 
a dual. This is only a one hand. And you see how small it is. Let me go ahead and just execute this guy. Come here. One, two, three, four. There you go. We'll use the... So it's, it's, a, it's a ranker sword, so it just, it just pulls out the ranker, the ranker spirits on people. That's the L2. The L2 pulls out ranker spirits. One, and then you push it again, it puts out some more. And then that's the R2. It's a pretty short looking sword. Okay. You got mad because I was using your own skill on you? Okay. Why is there so many of y'all? is rotter fruit anyways before i was rudely interrupted now we'll go to the katana this katana is the katana that was used by the uh what's this dude's called uh demi humans when bestowed with his weapon by their queen the swordsmen swear to find the truth that lies in the end of the possessions of stars and this is given by a demi this skill is named after the demi human sword master ozen Lion of Stars. So, R1. Katana R1. R2. Let me see. This has bleed on it? Yeah, it has bleed too. It's like every other katana. And it looks dope. You can see it in my lightsaber. And then the L2 is the thing that makes this weapon super crazy. We need to find somebody. The L2 is what makes this, this weapon an anime. Let's get rid of the dog first. Get out of here, dog. I'm, I'm about to put hands on your master. All right, the L2. One, one, two, three, four, and then five. Oof, up in the air. So the L2 is what makes this weapon super crazy. And that, that's the same thing that the uh, the demi-human swordsman would do to you when he's fighting you. All right, now we move on to another new class. This, this new class is the Great Katanas. So you got the regular Great Katana. This is not going to be the L2 for this one. I, took, I think I took it off. Yeah, let's do hand this. So you got the R1s. You got the R2. And then the L2 for this. Ah. So that this L2, you actually, is, is, you're going to hold it the whole time until you push R1. And you come on top of them with a quick smack. We're going to the Dragon Hunter Great Katana. Now this one is way different. Again, it has, it has the same R1s. And R2, but the L2 is the thing that's crazy. The L2 is against a Tensaiga. So, boom, boom. Pop that right out. Let's see it from a four, too. Boom. Goes right on them. Now, this is this sword is made for hunting dragons. So, if you're fighting some dragons, this actually takes more damage away from dragons. Because that's what it's made to, to do. And you get this from the dragon hunter. When the, 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 the one that invades you, whatever the case may be, you, 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 uh, you'll grab this from him. Let me uh, rest right quick and I'll pop back over there. Let me go to the description of this. Description. I think it actually says it. Formerly a dragon communion warrior, the ancient dragon man was once arbitrator of those worthy to devour the dreaded one. Designed to hunt colossus dragons. All right. Next we will put on the Rakasha's Great uh, Blade, a katana. This one is a berserker weapon used to endure enemies' attacks and reply with one full furry. Now, this will go to a big group of enemies. We'll put this down because R1 stuff's still the same. R1s and R2s still the same, just like all the Greek katanas. The thing about it is the, R, the L2 gives you a, uh, like I said, a berserker state. You basically swing through stuff. Like, you, you have, uh, what's it, super armor. So, L2... Trying to make somebody hit on me. Somebody wants to bite on me while I'm trying to do it. They keep they keep hitting me like as as I'm already. Yeah, he's hit me. There we go. That was better. I said they keep hitting me as I'm already like finishing the attack, so it doesn't work. But it has hyper armor, so you can push through attacks. All right, let's uh.
let's get to the next here we go we got euphoria this is your for this blade is supposed to be pretty dope from what i heard let me do a hand it like i'm supposed to now we're gonna have to go back we're gonna show you what's up with this one i think it's fully charged oh no not yet all right so you've seen that when it was glowing like that so right now it's not glowing so what you do when it's not glowing it, it goes like that it, it, that's that's it that's the that's the r2 i mean the l2 so that that's your little l2 on it but this weapon let me see if it says it in the description through the blades fashioned from gold, shots are largely wilted and darkened. Their lust can be restored by dealing damage to foes. However, damage dealt to those who live in death will have no such effect. So basically, if you kill an undead enemy, it has, it has no effect. But killing other enemies or hitting other enemies is, is good. So you see right now, the blades are black and stuff, right? Now you see... They're glowing a little bit now. It, it has a final level, and I, I, I don't know how to, to uh, see it because I've never used it before, but I think I'm at the final level right now. Let me see. We'll save one of y'all. All right, this should be the final level. So now when you press it, oh, yeah, this is definitely the final level. Now, now when you press it, it shoots a blast out. This dude spams that attack way too fast. You can't even get nothing off. But as, as you've seen, when you press it now, it shoots, it shoots a blast off when you do it so the more you charge it up the more it, it healthy it gets so you can blast somebody next we got a, a x and this is the twin x you get it from the death knights godric's knights so the r1 i think this is the first twin x in the game actually oh no because uh okay they, these things swing pretty slow so yeah yeah make sure you're timing it and they obviously they have lightning on them which is holy basically But that's the R1s is boom, 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 boom. R2, boom, boom. L2, wink. It's just, it's just that, that quick teleport. Now it doesn't do anything different just because you hit the L2 twice. All it does is just that quick teleport. You, if you try to swing through it, it doesn't swing through it. I, 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 this, I feel like it should spin. Maybe I'm doing something wrong here. See, it says a lightning charging spinning slash, but I, I haven't gotten to slash. Am I, am I missing something here? Ah, ah, I get it. I got it now. I got it. Here we go. Here we go. So you hit if you hit the L2 and then hit the R2, now it does it. It doesn't tell you that. There we go. I said that ain't shit because he does attack on you. He charges at you and lightning slashes you like such. Let's go reset the grace again to reset the enemies. We're gonna have the Bonnie's Butcher Knife, which I don't think is too much different. This is a great X. I don't think that's too much different than the other one that's in the first game. It just has a different one because you got it from Bonnie Village. So we'll go with the R1s. The R2. It's a that smash down. And then the L2. You just you sharpen it. And it actually makes it stronger. You see it glistening? Ba -ding, ba -ding. All right. Now we'll go to the Death Knight's Long Shaft Axe. 
Let's do a hand this. And then you got your R1s. Got your R2. It's a nice little swipe. And then we got your L2s. Hold on. They, 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 these dudes keep hitting me right when I'm about to do the attack. So same thing. You hit you hit you hit L2 and then you hit R2 and the R2 bounces you in the air to smash down. The next one you have is the putrescence, putrescence freaking cleaver, which looks like freaking the, the uh, Orphan of Cyrus bleed. So you have the R1s, your R2s, and then your L2. Boom. And now, if, if you fought him, you know his, his attacks kind of go like that, but it, it's crazy that you've been in your body that way. So it starts with the jump up in the air. Boom. And then you just, what, 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 what? And it just, it just keeps going as long as you keep hitting R2. I mean, L2, it just keeps going. Next, we have the uh, Flower Stone Gravel. Now, this came from the uh, one dragon chick. So this is this can be hit with one hand. And there's the R2s. And then the L2. Summon Lightning. The Dragon Boats. Now we have a Flail. It should be this one right here, the Family Head. Yeah, Family Head is the Flail. As you can see down there, there's little heads on it. Same thing like a regular flail. Except for this year. Some of some rankers. Serpent flail. Look at those snake snakes. Fire! Yeah, these ones should have been actually the serpent flails. All right, now you got the Scripsmith Great Hammer. Boom. Endure. So now I can endure some stuff. Toss the hammer. All the Scripsmith weapons, Smith Strip weapons, are meant to be tossed. So that's the whole thing about them. They all are tossable weapons. Then we come down to this Blood Fiend's Arm, which is supposed to be like one of the strongest Colossus weapons in the game. Because if you put bleed on this, it stacks really heavy with bleed to the point where I think it was like 200 and something bleed is what was happening. The chicken leg. And then that that attack right there does bleed damage too. They actually nerfed it. They, they nerfed this attack so it doesn't do as much bleed damage as it used to. And that's just the R2. That's not even the L2. This is the R2. This is the L2. The L2 is Endure. So you can you can take some attacks. Then you have this anvil hammer. Boom. 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 And then the L2. Boom. That's that's one. Boom. And all that does it. Up up spiking it up. Now you have this one. This came from a crucible knight. There's a crucible knight you're gonna fight that has this hammer. Mm, and then the L2. Smash down with it. It's crazy. It's dope. Pretty dope. Now we have the sunflower, the shadow sunflower blossom. We'll do a hand this too. Oh, I mean, did I mean do a hand? Do a hand this too. So boom, booming, boom, boom, and then L two. Turn it bigger. Smash down the ground on it. Ah, it, it, it does that little headbutt on you too when you're fighting it. And you have this. Uh, this uh, gazing finger. This is the from the, the mother from Mitch, Mitra or whatever. So you have the R ones again, R twos. Hmm. You really take that and and you see that that, that that kneeling is crazy. So wham! I'm still kneeling, bro. I'm gonna hit you while I'm kneeling. You getting this? And then you got the L two. I'm taking everything out. Now we have the Blood Fiend's Fork. Now this is a regular spear. We'll two-hand it just cause. But it's pokey, pokey, pokey. 
like like regular and you see it has a couple barbs on it. it has tree barbs on it and then you have the l2 which is like a scream now this weapon also i didn't mean to do that i'm gonna do this it's actually this weapon stacks pretty good with bleed we'll go down to now we have the barb staff spear we already look at this actually uh now we'll look at the uh blood fiend's sacred spear now this is the great spear version now you see that already stacks pretty much with blood too like it was at 93 with blood from again but it only has two spikes on it again poking poking and then the l2 is what it is l2 remote so it's basically just like another moog weapon and you have the Spear of the Impaler. The Spear of the Impaler, the Great Spear. Same Pokey Pokes. But the R2 is a toss. And you can hold it so you can blow up the ground some more. And then the L2 is this whole frenzy attack that he does with the spikes too. Like all of it. His whole little frenzy attack. So you can try to get that on enemy. It's probably not going to go too well. Then we have the Spirit Glaive, which does the same thing that Spirit Sword does, but it's just a glaive instead. So it still does the, the Ranker thing. Nothing crazy special. So if you use Ghost Flames, maybe this would be good for you. Got the Pole Blade of blood, of Bud. I, I, I'm forgetting to do something each time. The Pole Blade of Bud, basically, you get from uh, Romana, Romana, I think her name is. And here you got your Slashes. And then you have this here once and twice and butterflies. Let's do some, uh, let's, get, let's look behind this. See the butterflies of rot. We have this uh, obsidian lamer. This is the scythe that you get from Ansbach. R1s and R2s are just what they are. The L2 is a step back, but you gotta push L2 R2 afterwards. So step back, R2, and he does the slashing. Does his little dance. And now we have the tooth whip. The tooth whip is a whip basically with just tooth the teeth on it, that's all. And come here, boy. I said come here. Now me personally, I was waiting for uh Afro Sinji to find his weapon because he used whip in the first game and he went he would just be comical with it. But he found it this time in the whipping shack, but he didn't he didn't do anything with it. He just like uh whatever, like kinda kinda like skimmed by it. It was kinda disappointing because I expected him to be very humorous with these wimps. Alright, now we'll go to our first fist weapon. The pata. Now we'll do it with them, and you see they're just basically like fists with spikes on them. So that's that's all they are. Fists with spikes on them. And they do piercing damage, which I, I didn't notice might have said something, but piercing damage apparently is one of the strongest damages in this game. So repairs and spears and stuff like that are probably like OP in this game, but I didn't even notice that because I just never I use slashing damage all the time. Then you have your poison hand. This poison hand might be rough. Put it on both hands. It's just fists, like regular fists, and then the L two is a put in there. Like, like give it there. Let me get up in there. You basically stab them inside of them and poison them. It's the same thing for the madness one. The madness one is just just madness, but the same thing. Stab them in there. Put it there. And I, I learned too that the, the, the fist weapons have these strong, the quickest L2s in the game. That was all three L2s right there. So they're pretty OP in the sense of, of doing that because they have the quickest L2s in the game. Now you have uh, Tharlier. I can't remember how they pronounce his name. Tharlier. His hidden weapon, which is a sleep weapon. So now you can you can do it. It's just on your finger, which is crazy. It looks dope. See, his R L2 is different than the other L2s. I mean, R2s. And then here's the L2. So you can basically like put him to sleep. Now we'll hit... Uh, how, many, how many more we got left? Oh, we got a lot of perfumes and stuff too. We'll stop at the fists. We'll do the perfumes in another video. Now we have Dane, uh, the dry leaf arts. Let's do a hand this. Boom, 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 boom. This mostly palms. There's a couple kicks in there, but it's mostly palms. And the palm 
hit is the freaking R, the L2. And this is the R2, which is basically like some force onto that too. Then you have the the uh, Dane's footwork. So you got drive out, then you got Dane's footwork, which is the upgraded version of it. And this is mostly kicking. Some fists are in there, but it's mostly kicking. And then again with some kicking. And again, it's the palm right. Unless you change it to his other his other thing. And this fist is already here. You have this uh, claws of night. You can do well that as well. The R ones, some good bleed damage on this. The R two tosses it. The L two tosses all of them in a shotgun blast. Now we got the rare beast claw. Boom! You put both of them on. As beast claws is a new weapon type too, and you don't have two beast claws in the game. So it goes crazy, basically turns you like to an animal when the way you attack. So it's unpredictable. And then the L2 is some slash. If you fought the bears, you see they do that, they do this slash, like an air slash that hits you. And here's, here's the regular beast claws that you can get. Same same attack pattern and stuff. L1s and L I mean R1s, L2s. This, this is the L2. Some quick slashing. Quick old slashing. And that's gonna be this showcase for now we'll make another video with all the range weapons and uh the perfumes as well but that's it for all of the weapons that we have there all of the uh we'll say cutting weapons as would that be so i appreciate y'all tagging along with me appreciate the likes if y'all if y'all want to leave some of those or comment and uh the subscribe if you if you have if you're not subscribed and uh i'll catch y'all in the next one